Hello and welcome to The Huddle. Liam Santa Maria back with you after what was a wild round seven, uh, full of rivalry games, cross town, cross state matchups. Cairns beat Brisbane, the Phoenix won the throwdown, and of course, the Sydney Kings on the back of a spectacular game winning walk off shot by Sean Bruce won the freeway series matchup. And to discuss that and a whole bunch of other stuff, I've got the man of the moment, Sean Bruce on the show. So sit back, relax. Up next, Sean Bruce. Brucey, what's happening, mate? Thanks for jumping on. Yeah, not much, Liam. Thanks for having me. I've enjoyed the show as a listener, so thank you. Beautiful. Hey, uh, it is the day after the uh, afternoon before. How uh, how many times have you watched the clip? Yeah, a couple of times. I've been tagged in a few videos and um, plenty of notifications coming through the socials, so it keeps popping up a bit. But yeah, tried to enjoy the moment as much as possible and stay off that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, seen it a ton, which has been cool. Congratulations, man. Nothing like hitting a walk-off game winner. How, how many of those have you hit over the journey? Yeah, none, I don't think. Honestly, like between NBL 1 and here, I think I put one into OT maybe in NBL 1, and that, that was a couple of big big shots here and there. But, but, yeah, obviously nothing at this level. And, yeah, in a rivalry game and stuff like that, you can't really ask for much more. And you captured the moment beautifully. Did you have the night night celebration in the back pocket ready to go? It's funny. I, I act like a bit of a goose at training all the time, doing that stuff after a scrimmage win or we win a shooting drill about that. It's either that or I'm trying to hit the gritty at training, but <laughs> the timing and stuff that doesn't go as well. So um, I guess it was in my subconscious a little bit, doing it a little bit at Auburn when we're practicing. And yeah, it just came out in the moment. I think it was a beautiful thing because... You just had the perfect amount of time for it before the fellas got to you. And the fact that it's the rivalry is a heartbreak, absolute heartbreaker for the Hawks, the way it played out. And you just you just sprinkled on a little spice at the end. Yeah. And then, I mean, we had to wait to see if it was a two or three or whatever. And I'm just sitting there like, this better not be a two. And I've just done that stupid stuff. <laughs> Really lucky in the end that we didn't have to keep playing after that. I'd probably be pretty nervous to play another five minutes after doing something like that. But no, it was super fun and the boys got a laugh out of it for sure. The, the play, uh, you obviously, there's a couple of plays that led up. The, the, the great take from you, the great read from you and take uh, a couple of possessions earlier, down four, 13 seconds to go and you got quick to the bucket to put some more pressure on the free throws, which worked out unbelievably well for you guys. But then the out of bounds after Hickey swatted your, your stuff out of bounds. Play. Um, cool play because you, you spoke afterwards about how it was just, there was, you had to do it on the fly, no timeout. And it was just a play that had a few different options. Mm -hmm. And when you're the guy inbounding, that can be a tough situation because it's not like, you know, exactly where this shot's going to go to you've got to make the read no switch from them which i found surprising and then glove put it right in your shot pocket yeah i mean glove made an awesome play to go back before that like chase could quickly talk to me told me to keep the layup before and i probably didn't have that on my radar i'd probably dribble up and hand that off to dj nine times out of ten and hopefully he can drill a three but yeah, Chase was on the fly, kind of just told me to keep it and that was wide open. So we got that out of the way. And then I don't know how many times Timmy Conrad will ever miss two in a row. Like he's, I played with him before and he doesn't miss anything, whether it's a two or a three, whatever shot he gets up, feel like it's going to go down. And then, yeah, out of bounds, it was just a quick glance at glove. I'm like, if I've got separation, I'm, I'm going to be open. That's an option for you. And I think that was just on the front of his mind and, Obviously, I was open. Quad set a good screen as well. But, yeah, like I said, that play has got a lot of different options to it. And I think maybe some of the coaches on the Hawks were screaming out about something else that could have happened and players were worried about that a little bit. And, yeah, just opened up what happened in the corner and that was, the rest was history, I guess, from there. It is now. Um, was your foot on the line, do you think? 
I don't know. I, honestly, I saw some angles and I thought so, but then I've seen some other angles and it's hard to tell, like the angle of the cameras and whatnot. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough to know, but yeah, later on down the track, I don't think they'll be talking about that too much. Hopefully they just <laughs> see the result and know it's a three and we'll go with that. I ducked into the replay centre after the call, after we got off the broadcast and I was like, all right, let me see all the angles that yeah. you had. And it was interesting hearing Scott Butler, Butler talk through it because he was like, here's how it works. Chris Reed on the floor has like the best view of anyone on the planet of your yeah. feet. And he signals that it's a three. And so on the floor, the call is the three and then they go to all the angles, but they had no angle that showed it definitively they had the one from behind and the baseline camera was up and then it came and it cut you off on the feet and um so of all the angles that they looked at they couldn't say definitively one way or the other so it reverts to the call on the floor which was chris reed ironically chris reed of course in the in kudos bank arena with um with both hands up and and it's a walk-off game winner as a result yeah, well, I mean, there's, I guess, so many calls that can go and that's just the way the game goes sometimes. But, yeah, shout out to Chris and the cameraman, I guess. Um, after a shot like that, do you, and also, I mean, I guess this happened after the grand final win. I think, who was I talking to? Chase, I think. And I said, what was like one of your one or two kind of like favourite moments of the celebrations of the championship? And he mentioned like a quiet conversation with you about the journey. Um, mm-hmm. After a shot like that last night or the grand final win, have you taken some opportunities over the past 12 months to reflect a little bit on your journey and where you're at right now in this beautiful place in, in Sydney? Yeah, I mean, I reflect on that a lot without these kind of moments happening, without championships like there was a funny time in my career where I didn't have a gig and yeah, I had to just grind away up in Cairns. I think I was originally, I was training with Mike and then got down to Adelaide with Joey. And that year was just how I can look back at it now. It was just super special and a part of my journey and just a part of the chapter, which is now turning out really cool here in Sydney and getting some special moments. But yeah, it's something I reflect on a lot. Obviously, Bogues brought it up on Twitter as well. He's pretty pretty vocal about it but yeah it's cool to look back on but yeah just trying to enjoy the moment as much as I can as well because everyone everyone when we talk about your journey talks about that period of time the period of time at the start of that what was it 18 19 season um where you didn't have a team and eventually Joey picked you up and brought you to Adelaide we talk about that for me the moment that sort of pivoted things initially was the ankle injury in 2017 was it the was it the grand final yeah game, grand final in qbl one of the great yeah and you had just torn up the qbl so what is now the nbl one north mvp killed it playing for cam Tragar. and i was like he's coming into brisbane this season ready to have a career year he's he's going you know you had that moment in that period of time in cans where mark l starks got injured and you tore it up for a couple of games and i was like it's going to be that on the reg here we go it's the sean bruce era in Brisbane about to begin and then the ankle injury took away your preseason put you behind the eight ball and it was like just you know the ebbs and flows of your career that was a that was a real downer that injury just at this perfect time in your career when it was about to explode do you reflect on on that moment as well as saying uh, these are the sort of the bumps and grinds you got to ride out in in a long career in the game yeah I probably didn't appreciate that for what it was at the time and understood the the long perspective of it all and knowing that that was going to be a little setback for me you kind of pretty selfish at the time and wanted it all to happen but yeah being able to reflect on it a little bit now like yeah it's it's all a part of it but um obviously was playing some good basketball then trigger put the ball in my hands a ton and had a good year up there but yeah, had some inconsistent play in Brisbane, to be honest. Like I was up and down. Andre kind of lost trust in me a little bit, bringing in, I think, Trav and Steve that second year. So I probably wasn't going to be playing a ton anyway. Um, but that's just, yeah, what it is now. And um, yeah, had to do that tough year where I wasn't playing much and getting down with Joey and getting some confidence back and stuff like that. But yeah, love where I'm at now here in Sydney. I've had some awesome times and 
yeah, just enjoying it as much as I can and hopefully got a couple more years to go. You use the word trust in what you're talking about there. My man, Peter Hawley on the NBL Today podcast this morning called you the ultimate trust guy now in the hoops capital in inverted commodus. Um, he, he said, he spoke about how Chase just has that trust in you to make plays. He put those in those big moments last night and he, he's telling you to keep it, get the quick two and so on. He put the ball in your hands and told you to make a play. Like, is that, do you feel that in him now where you didn't maybe feel like that trust at that point with Andre, you feel like you've got that right now with Chase? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I probably won't have it much longer if I keep turning it over twice in the fourth and I had to go sit down. And if it wasn't for Derek getting cramps and stuff, I'm probably not even back in the game yesterday. But no, nah, Chase is great. He gives all of us tons of confidence. He's in all of our ears to be aggressive. Um, and that's all you want as a player. And I think all of us guys love playing for him. But yeah, it was a sloppy game yesterday and i got to be better with it down the stretch. But um, yeah, had an opportunity to turn it around. Eight and two. Um, obviously, a much better start to this season than what you guys had last season. Went on to win the championship. What, what's your feel about this season's group compared to last season's group? Yeah, I mean, obviously, bringing in guys back that understood Chase's system has been um, super valuable this year. We all had a fresh start last year and we're really trying to figure it out. But to be honest, we're still doing a lot of learning ourselves through these first few games or first 10 games. And I think we've just been lucky. We've been able to win through all those learnings and mistakes where some other teams probably can't. So we've still got tons of work to do. Um, I guess just in comparison, we took a lot of losses while we are learning last year. So definitely there's a lot more fun being able to learn with some wins, but yeah, tons of work to do. We're still not where we need to be to, defend our championship and we need to get a lot better the um the team put out a little video in advance of the weekend's game um about the freeway series and the rivalry between you guys and the hawks and in it your current teammate justin simon who used to play against you when he was with the hawks said that you are the kind of guy that you love to play with but you hate to play against why do you think he said that um he said that to me before in the locker room I think yeah I'm just I enjoy I guess the competition and um yeah if I can find weaknesses and getting under guys skins I'll try to do that but I think I just like to compete and I think when you match with that competitive by somebody sometimes you don't love playing against somebody that matches that that competitiveness and that's probably the biggest thing I enjoy about playing is just competing. And I probably, I don't think ever think I'm as, as talented or as skilled as anyone I come up against. So I'm going to try to be as competitive as I can in any way that it, that is. And, and that's what I enjoy about playing and love. So I've really enjoyed playing with Joss. He's, he's a character on and off the court and does so many cool things that don't show up that, yeah, we're really appreciative of. Uh-huh. I reckon that's exactly how one would want to be described as a baller. Like what better than that being a great a guy that guys love to play with and a guy guys hate to play against. Um, you talk about getting under guys skin. Voted the best trash talker in the league in the player survey during the off season by a long, long way. So best trash talker, here were the votes top four. Bryce Cotton with four votes, Sobes with 12, Mitch Creek in second spot with 14, and Big Shot Bruce at 42 votes in the gold medal position. Why do you think you get so many votes for that? What happened? No, I don't know. I think a lot of it comes from, I've played with a lot of guys now, and yeah. And maybe how I, how I train, I, I kind of bring the same energy, whether it's in practice or a game. But, yeah, I don't know. I think some of my own teammates voted for that a little bit too when the, when the fine print was you can't vote for your own teammates. So, okay. Yeah. You I think some I'll former take, teammates? Take it as it comes, but what's that? You think some former teammates? Possibly, but definitely my current teammates definitely okay. voted 
for me. Tommy Vodonovic stitched me up. I think he might have filled in a few more forms, but nah, it's all good. If that's what I'm going to get, that's what I'm going to get. It's all fine. I reckon a lot of people who never share the floor with you and like listen to you in an interview like this, for example, would find that surprising because uh, like you're not here i'm not hearing trash talk in what you're in, in this interaction you know and when you watch the play what you play in games it looks like you're like an under the radar trash talker you know like not in guys face necessarily pointing gesticulating maybe just the perfect comment here or there what when we talk about like the art of talking trash are you an instigator or more of a retaliator you see, it all starts for me. I think I've got some great players around me and I try to give them as much confidence as energy as I can. So if Zave makes a great play, I'm going to tell Zave he's making a great play. And if anyone's to hear that, like they can take offense to it however they want. But yeah, I'll try to hype Zave up as much as I can. I'd hype Casper up, Jalen, now Derek, like whoever's making plays out there, I'm going to hype them up. And <laughs> If there's some opposition in earshot, I guess they'll hear that. But yeah, I don't think I'm ever the guy you said that's just going to get up in somebody's face and start mm-hmm. talking for no reason. But yeah, it's all in fun and something that I try to give my teammates as much confidence as possible. You know what I noticed about those votes? Country Vic represent. Something about Horsham, huh? So A little bit of Horsham. Not far A bit away. Of What's going that's on it. in country in regional Victoria? I think it's just maybe some guys playing with a chip on their shoulder. Yeah. yeah. We're not from Vic Metro. We don't have everything shiny like you had it as a junior, mate. So, <laughs> no, we, we definitely play with a chip on our shoulder, but love competing as well. So, maybe that's what it is. While we talk about guys talking smack, um, what's going on over the back of your left shoulder there? Is is that an a, an early picture of King George recently crowned or what what's going on there? I don't know what that is. To be honest, it's a it's a doc photo of Paul Smith up there in a oh King's God. outfit. But yeah, looking around, they're everywhere. So it's just, ev- just Paul's playground up here at uh, the Hoops Capital. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Frame pictures of him as a royal are everywhere. Uh, you're going to have to come find out. You'll have to get an invite to the King's office. But we'll go wow. with that. How about that? Um, hey, man, uh, you've... you've sp- uh, carved out a little bit of time for me this afternoon after spending the day working at what ability in disability support and services tell, tell me about i mean this is the day after a massive win this is i guess your day off a bit of recovery and the like but you're in there doing that kind of work took, took me through how you got involved and what you're doing with those guys yeah, so it's just something I've picked up recently. It's something that I've looked into, yeah, just filling my days off with something other than basketball and something else that I can get into. Um, this kind of work, it's something that I did when I was back in Ballarat playing NBL 1. I did some stuff at a special needs school back then and, yeah, just found heaps of enjoyment being around those kids and now it's these participants that what ability have and, their whole company is about just bringing happiness to their participants and having heaps of fun. So when I saw that on the socials, I reached out to them and, and got involved. But yeah, it's been super fun. I've spent the afternoon at Time Zone on in Dodgem cars and, and doing heaps of stuff. And the kids always want to get out with the basketball as well. So we get outside and shoot some hoops. But yeah, just something I guess I'm passionate about and something that I get a lot of enjoyment as well as putting some smiles on some some kids' faces. So it's really cool. That is awesome. Is is it an area that you'd be looking to get involved in post career, perhaps? For sure, possibly. Um, yeah, but it's definitely something that I'm loving doing right now while I'm playing. Um, yeah, they've got NRL players, netballers. They've got a bunch of different athletes involved. So it's a very cool company. That yeah, it's it's been fun to be a part of. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Hey, um, it's been a crazy season. I tweeted earlier today that it's the first time in NBL history, the two teams that finished last and second last the previous season were sitting inside the top three after round seven. So Kansas and New Zealand have completely flipped their fortunes from from last season. There's some teams down the bottom, Melbourne United, we're used to seeing them in the finals every year under Dean Vickerman. They're having a tough season. What's your read on 
on the landscape of this of the league this season. You guys are obviously sitting on top, but on the your feel on the floor playing against these teams and, and seeing who's getting what done. What's your read on on the season at this point? Yeah, well, we obviously had New Zealand recently before the FIBA break and they were ultra tough. Like they play hard defensively for 40 minutes. Like they're that's definitely their identity that they're looking to change from recent years. And yeah, cans are the same. They're super tough, got athletes all over the floor. They guard really well. So I guess between them and us, I think the defensive end is probably what's separating us from the rest of the league right now. But yeah, we haven't had Southeast yet. Obviously they're starting to play a lot better now. They're getting everyone healthy and yeah, we'll see how we go. But those teams at the top, top it's something that I think we've all identified that the top teams are always those defensive teams and that's kind of what everyone's bringing so far yeah and it's what Chase has as well and truly brought to you guys he came in and he said that we're going to rip it off the board and we're going to push but in order to do that we've got to force misses and you guys yeah. have been a lead at the defensive end it's like um Joey writes Adelaide 36ers everyone loved how high octane they played but it always started defensively yeah. his message to his guys like you can do whatever you want offensively but you do what i tell you to do at the defensive end and we get that job done um speaking of chase have you found any kind of difference in him this season to last sometimes people when they get married they kind of calm down a little and they kind of find some a beautiful space in life is that what's going on for chase buford he's mixing up his what he's wearing on game day yeah maybe if anything it's just the fit yeah i don't know but no nah, in terms of the day today he's bringing the same energy he's not coming down at all i think mm -hmm. he comes in and his biggest things about us competing so he'll do whatever he can to create an environment without a practice whether that's coaches getting involved in drills and making competitive if it's him talking whether it's whatever it is like it's the same environment here in Sydney as what we've seen from him since he walked in and um, yeah obviously he's got some exciting stuff going on with recently getting married and and um, some other stuff that's yeah super exciting for Chase. Mm, okay all right well, we wait to see what that might be at some yeah, stage. I don't know if I got halfway saying something but yeah We'll leave it at that. That's you almost enough. let the cat out of the bag. Just hear a meow in the bag there, but you're keeping it that's, locked up. That's fair enough. Keep it there. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, um, good luck going back to back. You guys are in a, in a great spot to, to try to make that happen and playing really well. Eked out a win without Xavier on the floor yesterday, which is terrific and um, having a great season. And we're loving watching it. And thanks heaps for the chat, man. Good on you for coming on. Thanks, Liam. Got tons of work to do, but yeah, we'll keep at it. All right. Cheers, man.